Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Sunday Q and A, which potentially will be the last Sunday Q and A of the year, because next Sunday is Boxing Day, so I'll probably have a rest, and the Sunday after that isn't a new year, unless I do an in betweener, which I do from time to time. Um, I might just have a rest. Should we just have a rest, guys? Might be nice. There is no way I'm going to be able to keep this. Is even a hat? This is a stocking. That's sort of there's no way I'm going to be able to keep that on for the whole of Sunday Q and A. We we'll start off festively, and ah, before we go any further, just to let you know that this is now also available as a podcast. If you type in Pete the Courier Driver. It's out there just in case you'd rather listen to it when you're driving rather than take the time to watch it. Um, Nick at London Creative did me a wonderful graphic, which would appear now. The problem is to put the graphic in, I have to run it through the video editor. And I can't be bothered. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I'm not one of them snazzy kind of guys, as, as you can probably tell. Yeah, probably didn't even need to say that. So anyhow, so before we start, I've got to say a big thank you to everybody um, at the Varieties of English class in the university over there in Utah. Um, what a bad turn up for the books that was. That's a bit bright, isn't it? That's, that's bright. There you go, that's better. Um, yeah, what a turn up for the books that was. Um, basically, it turns out that my videos are being used as examples of Cockney speak. <laughs> I was just, I'm, I'm amazed, flattered, and uh, really kind of honoured the fact that you're using it. So, but I want to say a big thank you to, um, I want to say a big thank you to Joey, who are called Joel. Joey, I'm sorry, mate, I've got to get stronger glasses. So, Professor Joey, and to McKay, and My Novel Adventures, and Katrina Jackson. I'll try and do this in Cockney for you. Mo Tanner, um, Aaron, uh, Brian Wingham. And Leanne Chung. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much. I truly appreciate it. It's wonderful. So, cool. Also, Nick London Creative, I've got, um, he says, um, yes, he, he, thanks very much for pointing out the fact I said Joel through the video. Sounded festive. No, it didn't. I just read it wrong. Um, yeah, so it is Joey. Joey the Professor. Cheers, mate. And um, also to point out that I'll do your link. Nick's done a video on Cockney too. It's just kind of, it's a bit more historical and a bit more um, where it comes from and what's going on there. So if you fancy a watch, there it is. So to Joey Stanley, he says, thanks for shout out, Pete. He says, um, I love your thoughts on language that everybody changes depending on the situation. Always a delight. Joey, once again, honoured. Cheers, guys. Right. Um, oh, also a little bit more about the university. We're going. We found out a little bit more about it by now. We will get onto the courier thing. The courier thing is definitely coming. Um, and it what is it's as far as he knows, Brigham University is in Mormon country in Utah, uh, where they settled sometime in the eighteen sixties. And also, yeah, thanks for that, Andy. And also, um, you, oh, by the way, guys, let me know more about what's going on, please. Um, and Rock God 23, who's a big time Charlie on the old YouTube thing. He's got his own channel. He was one of the first Rock God, one of the first guys to make videos about it. He's got family out there. He says, at the time of the Industrial Revolution, my great great grandfather had five brothers. To escape the pollution and poverty, two of the brothers, James and William, ventured to England to the New World. They arrived on the East Coast where they ventured west. Eventually, they arrived in Utah. At the instruction of uh, Brigham Young, they settled in the north of uh, Salt Lake City. A settlement grew. They're still there today um, in a small place called Hefner. Originally, Hefnerville, with a small population of about a thousand residents. The first ever American flag was flown over the town and was made by James by James's wife. I plan on visiting during the next trip to the States. A bit of family history for you. Rock God, always love it. It's nice to get a bit of history from people, you know? I'm learning all about um, Steve Campbell's nefarious past. It's always wonderful to hear. I, I like to hear it. It's cool. Oh, and on the subject, Steve Campbell, he's here actually now. He says, um, he said, I did, he said, you didn't sound like a Cockney in the Travellers. We met for a pint. He actually, well, he had a Coke. He don't drink, mine a pint. Um, and the pub Travellers is like, well, pub to me. Um, he said, I have to ask the lad in the local shop to repeat himself twice. I struggled to buy diesel in Wendover as I was trying to ask for my All-Star Fuels card. Um, but he said, but I understand it's to you. Uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, appreciate that. Um, although I was confused that you can now make payments by flashing your phone at the bar. Never seen that before. It's good. You pay with your phone rather than paying with a card, because no one's got money anymore, particularly on the exchange. I used to have money all the time as a market trader. Got, everything was cash. Couldn't understand why someone didn't have 10 quid for a taxi, and now I haven't got 10 quid for a taxi. I have to go to cash cards, because everything is paid 
through invoicing, which goes straight into your bank. Never got cash anymore. But now we live in a world where no one uses cash anymore. So you can pay with your card, or if you've got the code, the phone, you've got to do the fingerprint to unlock the phone, which means if someone nicks your phone, if someone nicks your wallet, they can beat the card. If someone nicks your phone, they can't. I can pay with my watch. Not this one. Well, my electronic one, but it's pain. It's, and, it, and hey, you look like a bit of a knob. So I pay with my phone. You should probably still look like a bit of a knob, but more people do it now, particularly the youth. I don't think I'm going to pass on that one. I've gone off on a tangent. We're coming back. We're coming back. <coughs> uh, yeah. And also, you did, Steve just finally says uh, it is a Mormon university. Uh, Steve is a rogue Mormon, apparently. Oh, well, there you go, Steve. Wonderful. I don't care what anybody does, as long as they're nice to each other. That's always been my philosophy. Um, domain name guy says on the Cockney thing, can you sing the Lambeth Walk? No, but I can do the whole of Chaz and Dave's Jamboree bag, the whole of side one beginning to end, because I used to work on Jeff Love's record store on Milton Keynes Market every Saturday selling it, and we played it on a loop for, hmm, I'd say, three months before Christmas, every Christmas. Get me on that one. And I also can do a very good rendition of the sideboard song. Matter of fact, no, that's not chips going to spend. I'm not with that. Um... And Andy Drum says, um, oh, well, because we said about the Geordie accent, I said, put Geordies in call centres because um, <laughs> because when you ring up to complain, you end up going, what a lovely person. He says, I don't know what it is about the Geordie thing, you're right. And you should find yourself in a conversation with a Geordie. If ever they say the words Kawasaki or conjunctivitis, you should, <laughs> you should bring yourself a bladder control. Also, pooper scooper, he said, is another good one. And I know what you mean. I've got family up there. My cousin, uh, Alex, they live up... Um, in, I think it's Ash, Ash Summick. It's near Whitley Bay, my auntie Vera used to live in Whitley Bay. And I went up there once to visit them. And she said, haven't you got a funny accent? I went, oh, that's rich coming from when the boat comes in. <laughs> They're great people. I wish I could see them more, but, I, you know, family in it. Right. I was better talk about courier driving there, don't we, really? Bearing in mind I'm now seven minutes into this and uh, I haven't mentioned anything to do with vans yet. So... Periphery jobs and backloads. This is kind of um, why you pay, your areas you don't want to go to and should you give it cheaper to get out if you need to and that kind of stuff. So van on a run says, he says, oh, by the way, it's if I'm struggling, it's a little bit dark in here because um, I kept it for the Christmas lights, which are now up, courtesy of Interior Design Child. We've even got Christmas cactus, which is environmentally friendly. It means we don't have to cut no trees down. We just put some lights around the cactus. Cactus cost me a fortune. But I'm of the belief that it was my 50th birthday present for my wife. And the way it's going, in about three years' time, it pays for itself in the money it saved in Christmas trees. Always thinking ahead. And you don't. You save yourself fortune water. It doesn't take any water whatsoever. You water it, it goes like this. <laughs> Career driving. Yeah. Van on the run. He says, I totally agree with the sea thing. He says, often overlooked by others, I feel. Because I said, if you go near the sea, you've got to bear in mind, and I'm going to shore them on sea on Monday, but I don't care because I now I've done, I, I was supposed to have a day off on... I will get on the courier driving, I will. I was supposed to have a day off on Friday to go see the show up in Thursford, and we pay for the tickets, and we pay for the hotels, and then the coronavirus thing kicked in, and we all kind of went, well, is that the sensible thing to do? And, you know, I make people ill and not... And so we said, well, OK, fair enough, we're not going... And as it turned out, I was lucky because we cancelled the hotel, and then they cancelled the show. And if they had, if they hadn't, if I had gone, the show would have been cancelled. Still would have had to pay for the hotel. Um, and I went out to work on Friday because obviously I think I have a day off and just sit around the house somewhere. Um, and I had a very very busy day. So now I've got four days left to go. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm kind of treating it like the last week of school. It's going to be like I can watch videos, I can wear my own clothes, I can bring in games. And if I just do like one job a day or something like that, and it will start to slow down now. The exchange will still, because places are shut in. One of the places I picked up for on Thursday, I do pond liners out of Milton Keynes, regular run up to Birmingham. It's a good little run, it's easy, and it's always done quick. Um, but the guy turned around to me, and this was last Thursday, and he went, yeah, this is our last day, we're shutting out till the New Year's. Construction will shut. It will get tougher, because if places are shut, there's lessons to ship. So if you haven't done it by now... Mm, there will be jobs. There will be work. It's just how hard you want to push yourself to do it. So I'm not worried anymore. I'm, I'm not playing. That's it. Van on the run. Sea thing. You go near the sea, half, half the land mass has disappeared. You can't pick up. It's often overlooked by others. I've done a few jobs into North Wales, quoting big money, as I include mileage back to the Chester area at 85p a mile. 
this is not a cost rate. He said, I managed to visit my parents and stay at theirs and get a home cooked meal, etc. win, win, win. He said, once I picked up a job out of Bangor, you've done well there, in the morning, so essentially got paid twice for the same mileage for the job. I find often that this is not the case of who dares wins with going to these places. It helps if you're very flexible. Where, I mean, he tramps. He said, this is where trampers like me win, and it's true. If you're prepared to tramp and you're prepared to go anywhere, you massively increase your chances. Because there might be one job going out of Bangor, and it might be going to um, uh, Ayrshire. You think, I don't want to go to Ayrshire. I, I live in Milton Keynes. But if you're going tramping, fine, I'll go to Ayrshire. Get what I can out of Ayrshire. Just keep going until I get back, as long as it's not a Friday. You want to get back on a Friday. He does too, I believe. Van on the run, own channel out there. Check him out with we'll the link. Um... Bellsization says there's no such thing as a backload. Where can I buy backload fuel? It's true. Your X's are the same. Your wear and tear on a vehicle is the same. Your time is the same. The fuel is the same. It's true. Uh, Florin Cadair says um, a high backload don't have to be on the CX when I fill my tank of diesel. He said I pay the same money in fuel. He says it's still 169. It's true. Alan Bray. Now, this is a reasonable point, which I didn't think it would be made, in fairness. He says, um, Backload is taking me home. If it's near, if it's not near home, it's not a backload. Um, but seventy percent p a mile rather than one ten a mile is better than zero p a mile when I'm heading that way anyway. Sometimes we send a van out and ask to collect for return, so you go in there and back. That's always cool. If you can get weight and return, and it's coming from your area. That's nice. The only fo the only problem I've got with weight and return is I'm normally done by like one two o'clock, and then I'm back in my own area at one two o'clock, knowing I'm going to have to go out again. I mean, there are different ways of doing it. We said this, the up and down, the triangle, the multi-drop. I did a video on this one on best ways to run a van. And the truth of the matter is you're rolling the dice all the time. Unless you've got regular customers and you can just marry it all up, you're rolling the dice. Um, he said, you said, yeah, um, money. He said, we send him out and we try to get him work coming back. So it works in our favour as well. This is true. Though backload is a low coming home. I had, I had, well, okay. Like I say, last week I did one going down to Southampton, and then it's pinged up, and it was Southampton to Luton, and I, I lost one of these recently by quoting too much money. And I didn't, I didn't quote too much money, but I quoted two fifty, and it went for two pound, which is kind of Luton money. But I thought Southampton to Luton, I'm having that. So. Um, that was the two pound one. I rung him up and he said, "I've just pressed the button. You just sold it. I just missed it." Oh, I would have given you one ninety just to go because one ninety was taking me home. Um, and said so I went home empty. So this one came up, Southampton to uh, Luton. Uh, no, it was well, I'll tell a lie. Well, this is the second one. This was Paul going to Bedford. I quoted him two pound a mile. I said it's a very. I rung him up three hundred quid. Very keen price. She said, "I'll just contact the. Uh, I'm just. I'm just ring the customer. Magic job." She ran me back, in fairness, a lot of the time they don't. And she ran me back and she said, I'm ever so sorry, it's not going to be ready till Monday. This was Friday, this job. It's not going to be ready till Monday. And she said, and we gutted. Even the customer has gone, oh, I can't believe it. If we'd have been done today, we could have got it for that price. And they know they're going to have to ship it on Monday and they know they're going to have to pay more money. Um, and I was gutted as well because I thought, okay, I'm going home empty. But it's Friday and I was supposed to be going to show. So I've got half money anyway. And then one pings up. From Winchester, I drove down Christmas Hill. There's a Christmas Hill in Winchester. Was it festive? No, it's a hill. Um, and then I had to go to Coventry. But I got the same money going down as I got. I got three fifty going down and three fifty coming back. Like I said, Friday was a busy day. A good money, and I was home. I left at a reasonable time. I got home at a reasonable time. I wish why next week we're taking it easy. So, but he makes a point. He said, These jobs are coming up to close to my house, and I thought you're rolling the dice again. If you go in too dear, you could lose the job that is literally taking you home. Nice easy day, feet up, cup of tea, job done. But if you go in too cheap, you're just giving away money. You might be saying, "I'll do the job for two hundred pound," and the shipper's sitting there thinking, "I'd have paid three hundred for that." Lovely, I'll take that. You're rolling the dice. I can't tell you how to do it. Um, Godzilla's. He says sometimes it's better. It's better than nothing. Same as what we've just been talking about. Seventy p per mile isn't bad. If it's forty five p per mile, the, the, rattle the cage and go. You know, he goes. You know what? I'm not bothered. <laughs> if you, for that kind of money, let someone else do it. Type thing. Um, the two hundred fifteen miles pay sixty quid. Laughable runs. Collect any time, but must be there in the next five hours. Get posted. This always makes me smile when it says backload has to be collected at between 7 and 8 in the morning and be there as soon as possible. That's not a backload. 
That's not a bad backload. There is a firm out there called Three to Five Days. They're a backload firm. You know, these pallets need to be collected sometime this week, and they need to be up there sometime this week. That's a backload. We these things are hot shots. These, these things, we, we, we do hot shots. What, what, what is the term hot shot? It's just a job. <laughs> when we basically do jobs, courier jobs for backload money all the time, and then they ask discount on discount. It's what we do. If you get it right, it still works. Um, Ash Morris says, um, Hi, Pete. Hope you're well. Enjoy listening to videos when I'm out on the road. Just a general observation about delivering to Scotland. Like I say, periphery areas, places you don't want to go to. Uh, this is the fourth time I've delivered to Scotland and the fourth time I've come back empty-handed. It feels like a ghost town up there. My tactic is to quote enough profitable pence per mile to get me back down to at least Newcastle, Carlisle and Newcastle. And he goes on and there's, there's quite a bit more comment on this if anybody wants to look it up. It's uh, Ash Morris's comment. But it's an interesting point here. That why, I mean, like Van Run says, you can quote double, you can quote return miles what ash is doing there is he's quoting the miles it's going to cost him to do the job and then adding on the miles afterwards that it's going to take him to an area where he can pick up another job so say if it was me if i was delivering to edinburgh rather than giving the miles from here to edinburgh i'd give them the miles from here to edinburgh and then edinburgh to say um blackpool or preston because i'm thinking well by the time i hit preston manchester liverpool got half a chance like you know so everyone does it their way i do it my way a lot of the time I wing it, you do it your way. <laughs> you be you. Right, we also did uh, the best way to sort out a multi-drop. Now, as I've said many times before, I'm not the multi-drop guy. I've done Argos, 40, 40 parcels. I've done Parcel Force, that was 60, 70 once. Um, I've done the Fridges, they're, they're 10, 12 drops. It's not a multi-drop. It's not like you guys out there that are doing the Amazon, that are doing the Hermes, laughing at me right now. Admittedly, you might have Amazon, you might have 250 drops, but one of them, 10 of them might be in the same street. My drops always did tend to be spaced apart, particularly with the Argos. Um, you know, sometimes you drive 20 minutes, half an hour just to get to one drop and then 20 minutes, half an hour back again. But I am still not the guy and I have to bow to other people's superior experience on this one, which is what the channel's all about. So, Steve Campbell, he says, um, he says, he says, I find the best way to sort out the, the multi-drop is to sort it at the postcode areas, such as on a run at Yodel, um, on the SR4s, 6s, SR47s, and SR40s, sort them into piles, put them on the van, scan them in, scan them in, then optimise the route. I would place the last drop on the van first, um, and, and they've got the first one right up against the bulkhead type thing. Uh, first drops on the passenger seat. That's good if you can get them. Yeah, get them. I agree with that one, yeah. Um, I hope you don't get caught because you're not supposed to have parcels on the front. Although, in fairness, they're, they're not going to they're not gonna put you in prison. Steve, I hope, please. Not again. They're just going to go, mate, they ain't supposed to be there. Put them in the back. I hope if you get the right guy. Um, yeah, that's basically the size of things, really. So that's how he would do it. He would do it in the postcode areas. Uh, Godzilla says, my perspective, bang the light into the app as quickly as you can. Oh, hang on a second, the cat needs to get out. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, bang them into the app as quickly as you can. Well, you have them all on the floor, group them into, say, B771 pile, B781 pile. So everyone was doing what I was doing, which is good, because I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't. But everyone else seems to sort them in the postcode order first. And then that way it makes it easy to scan them and sort of uh, put them in. Allocate areas on this. This one, interesting. Allocate areas on the van to numbers 1 to 20, like the side door working back towards the rear door. Um, and don't, whatever you do, break hard for that day, because otherwise everything goes everywhere. Uh, the reason to feed out the side door is simply, if it's going back, um, hang on a second, the reason to feed out the side door is simply that if it's going back as no one's in, you have, um, I don't understand what it says, sorry mate, I can't pick that one up, um, yeah, so there's, there's the thing. <laughs> there's the thing. Nick at London Creative, he says, uh, one trick is put the tape on the floor and then sort of put it in the boxes and put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the boxes. And then you can work out, um, they can be like each postcode. For example, um, LU1, one, LU2, two. That could work, that could work. I never did that, I've never got that. But the things I didn't do it all the time. If you did it all the time, I would imagine that most of you, if you do it all the time, don't, I mean, I've seen the Amazon mob. They didn't have these bags. It's kind of collapsible bags. And I assume that what you do is when you saw, you might have a pink one, a red one, a blue one, a beige one, I don't know. 
Why did I pick them colours? What's wrong with red, blue, green, and yellow? Um, and you just pick the boxes up. One, two, five, two. That would work, I think. The only problem is then you find the, the, the patio set. Okay, well, that goes in separate. I still say circuit. Scan them. Just scan them. Beep, 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 and say where it goes. Or you could you could do both. You could scan them. You still use the circuit to optimize your route, but have the bags. I think bags might work. Again, please. We're gonna. I'm doing something with a circuit mob. In fairness, um, we might be doing like a live stream. It's kind of been aimed mainly at the multi drop because their target audience is multi drop. But it might be like um, once every three, once every season, once every three months, we might be doing a live stream kind of question, like, like basically a live Sunday Q and A. And it won't necessarily just be about the multi drop, but it probably will be circuit orientated because I'm doing it on their behalf. I don't know if it's going to go on my channel or their channel, but we're something we're going to do in the new year. So if you're interested, we'll find a time. I'll sort myself out with a microphone and some headphones, you know, look like one of those DJs from the past, you know, kind of uh, Radio 1, bye-bye, that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, away we go. That should be happening in the new year. So, uh, where was we? Jeremy Hawk says... Pete, I can draw from my vast experience, and he laughs, so I don't know what that's all about. Uh, draw, a, <laughs> draw the deliveries on an A to Z map in blue, draw the collections in red, chuck it in the back, jump in the cab, put your foot down, turn on the radio, want to forget about it. Jamie, oh, Jeremy, I'm sure, Jeremy, I'm sure, I'm going to get some people's name on again. I'm sure that works very well if you're on the same route every day. <laughs> But if you've got different parcels going to different locations, I'm telling you, circuit's the way forward. Uh, domain name guy, he says, I would... Add for a newbie, this is quite interesting, uh, multi-drop pods don't get phased by the volume of the drops you see in your pile. <coughs> it's true. I turned up a parcel for us. They gave me 70. You know, I'm like, I ain't ever going to get this done in a day. Because I take personal pride in getting it all in. I, I think I had to return four parcels uh, only because they were not in. I got every other one. And, I, and then I saw these other guys coming back, just chucking tons of parcels out of the van. I'm like, is that how it works? Um... Again, let me know. He says, uh, he says, right, so don't get phased by the amount of volume in drops you see in your pile, etc. Because a person will soon start saying to themselves, they'll never be able to deliver all these parcels. And the more you say that to the se yourself, you'll be uh, right and bring half the parcels back. Just relax and think your way around the route while you're still in the depot. Whilst putting your parcels in the in, in a drop order, the way that way you'll overcome any problems on the route before you leave the depot. So you can basically you know sort out your collection times, your time. Yeah, so, so spend some time sorting it out first, and then do your route as best you can. And when the time is over, you go back, and that's that's the way you do it. Um, Ian Merrick, our man in Scotland. We'll come to that at the end, Ian. I thought he was in Scotland. I don't know. I know nothing. Um, he said, morning, Pete. Listen to podcasts for the first time yesterday. Like I said, this is now available on a podcast. All the Sunday Q&As are available on the podcast. They're out there on the Spotify and the Apple and the Amazon and the Audible and Stitcher, whatever that is. Um, yeah, just type in Pete the Courier Driver Sunday Q&A. There you go. You can listen back to, to, to old episodes should you choose to. And also, I've also given them in titles. So if you're interested in, or I say all I really want to know is about backloads, I want to know more about how the app works. They're in titles, so that can help too. Uh, this is the podcast first time yesterday. Volume is fine. We were concerned the volume weren't working. Yeah, I've tried. It's fine for me. You just let me know if anyone else has got a problem. Um, right, loading-wise, um, the best I managed at Hermes, 90 drops, was to divide the back of the car into three lines, front to back, putting the packages in postcode order with two bags in the footwell and two separate villages about the passenger seat with a seat belt so the wing mirror was visible and the bag was secure. I also swear by um, green 300 litre garden waste bags. You see the bag thing? I've said about the bag thing. This makes sense. Um, with red handles on top and sides. Um, but to be honest, I never deliver in a car ever again. By the way, if anyone has done a video on whether multi drops actually kill starter motors, cogs, DPF filters, yeah, because you're stopping and starting all the time. They ain't going to do your, you know, milk floats are electric for a reason. Um, yeah, that can't be doing that. Cannot be doing your van any any favors, can it? Really? And if you leave it running, worst case scenario, you're doing the environment and doing a load of diesel. Well, best case, uh, sorry, best case scenario there. Worst case scenario, you come back, your van's gone. <laughs> Someone's driven off in it. They've got a load of free Christmas presents in the back. Everyone's a winner. Well, they're not. The man who drives the van and the company aren't. But um, there you go. Uh, Jeremy Hawk says, 
we he goes on in fairness. He's done other He says he said the thing because I said about um, if the thing about being a multi drop driver is if you can do the multi drop, you can do it all. It's kind of like the SAS training. Once you got through that, the rest of it's easy. And he says he believes he's in back, baptism by fire. Extreme multi dropping is good training with some weekend work on the road uh, for three months with no break. So I think that the industry deserves more respect than it gets as far as experience is concerned. You can't just throw anybody in a van and send them out over over the continent for two weeks. We're all learning. Uh, myself, only this week after a lifetime of the game, learned uh, two tier security requirements for the RAF at Lake and Heath. Uh, there's a lot to learn despite what people think. Yes, prisons, airports, um, even just RDCs, Waitrose, just be prepared for a very long wait. Stoke, be prepared for a very long wait. Gotta stop saying that, I'm upsetting you. <laughs> They've got better now, honest, JCB. Um, yeah, no, there's loads to learn, absolutely loads to learn. I'm learning all the time. And the thing is, it's good when you get it, when you suddenly realise that there is a way to get a four metre pallet on a box loot, and if you've got two, if you've got a clever fork truck driver and a pallet truck, you can do it. It's a video that I never made. I was always going to do it, and now I, I don't know if I ever will, because I've got curtain side. But um, maybe I'll do it with diagrams. Maybe we'll do that way, maybe. Uh, anyway, going on. Paul Bond, he says, uh, I'm starting Hermes this weekend. Uh, learn a lot from your videos. Got the circuit app, which seems like a lightsaber. Thanks, Paul. I really recommend it because I think it's really good. And they pay me, but that's irrelevant. I still think I'd, I'd tell you it was the best app out there if they didn't pay me. So they pay me to make the videos showing people why it's the best out there. So that's kind of different. Uh, there was one guy actually didn't like it. I don't know if his comment came up. He said he didn't like it and he was going to try and give away where he go. Mate, I don't know why you don't like it. He said he keeps sending back on himself. Um... Yeah, I really don't know what's working out for you, but I mean, I can put you in contact with them, find out what's going wrong alternatively, see if the other one works for you. But you're the only one so far that said that, so I'm still thinking maybe I'm giving right advice. Moving on. Be a long one a day, isn't it? Still, you ain't going to have to listen to me for another couple of weeks, so you might as well make the most of it. Maybe split it into sections. Watch it, you know, like, I just... Um, how much experience do you need? Should we split it into sections? No. How much experience do you need before you join the CX? This is a very good question, and I can't believe I didn't do this video before. Um, McNeil93 says, thanks for the video, Pete. I appreciate that. He says, uh, I think it was him that asked the question, actually. For me, I think I'll hold my nose and jump. I was made redundant a few months ago and have been slowly eating through my savings, so may as well go for it. Another one for the community. Does anyone have any info on the HX? Are there jobs on there for Arctics? Do you need to own your own trader for jobs for picking up traders and dropping them off? Just curious as my options on the C&E are coming up. Um, I thought I might as well. I, I, the only thing I can tell you about the HX is um, it, works for, it works very well for us with the 18 tonnes and I'm on it on a 7.5 tonne. I don't know how it works if you've just got a tractor unit, if you need to move trainers. So I think we're going to put that one to the wise guys. Is their jobs just for tractor units? I think most of them have got tractor and trailer, and then they will book the lorry. And the thing is, there's not that many jobs for a six axle in comparison that you can't do in an 18 ton. So you're kind of better off with an 18 ton. But that's only, I haven't got, we haven't got any Arctics. So I don't really know. So we're going to put that one out to the wise guys. What do we think about six axle trailers and Arctics on the HX? Question out there, the boys, to be answered in the new year. Or between Christmas and New Year, if I get bored, which I won't. I've got Far Cry 6 coming. I'm going to shoot pretend bears. Um, Jim Allen at JJBS Services Limited says, um, he said about, you know, he said, great. He said, I jumped in. Right, yeah, so you said about jumping in when you hold your nose and jump. Jim Allen did. I jumped in and I managed okay. You will make some mistakes, but then who doesn't? Even after doing it for a while, the best thing about the CX is you can take control. Multi-drop for another company is just chaos and Big Brother is watching. I agree. I agree. Um, I mean, hopefully there'll be some videos on here, which if you do your research and you do gen up a bit, and there's other guys, there's Big Beardy, there's Van on the Run, there's other people doing it, do your research. You may swerve some bullets, but you can only swerve so many. I'm still getting hit. I'm on it for three years, and you go, oh, I don't. I should know better. Either things we think I know better than to do this job, or I've done, or oh Christ, I didn't realise that happened. But then you, they only catch me once. Well, say that. <laughs> but yeah, it's the same with anything. You go, you go. We learn as we go. Uh, domain name guy says, um, a person who has only put the the queue in the. Hang on. Uh, 
A, per a person only, this is true, a person only has to put their question in the comments and some Bob will answer it, while quickly many other careers on YouTube whilst waiting to be tipped, etc. He says, um, there's something about some TACO regulations for newbie truckers. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the point there being, again, if you've got a problem or if you've got a question, you don't know if something works, stick it in the comments. I might not know the answer. I often don't know the answer, but there'll be someone out there who does. And then they will answer it and I'll read it out next Sunday. That's kind of how it works. We're a community now. It's, it wouldn't start off as a community. It just started off as me as a Mickey Mouse market trader making terrible videos. But we're kind of slowly evolving into a community and I'm actually proud of that, proud and happy that we've got a little sort of core people and other people that don't know and they come and ask the questions and we share the information and we make people's lives better and that's the way it should be. So, yeah, any problems, stick it in, any questions. I had a lady ring me up this week. She said, I've got your number off YouTube. I hope you don't mind. I went, no, that's why I put it there in the first place. I'm happy to ask your questions. The one thing I will say, don't send me an email. Don't put it on messages. Don't put it on Facebook. I won't see it. I don't look at these things. If you've got a question, either ring me or stick it in the comments. If you stick it in the comments, it's brilliant. Because a lot of the time, you'll ask a question on a Monday. I go to look at it on a, like a, a Friday, ready to record it on Saturday. 10 people have already answered the question for me because there are people out there that will reply to your comment that know better than me anyway. It's just a good little place, little community where we can help each other, which is it's just turned into something wonderful and I'm very pleased. It's very... There you are. Full of Christmas cheer. That's what it's all about. Peace and goodwill to all men. It's a marvellous philosophy. It should happen more than one day a year. It should happen 365. You can have a leap year off. You can do the purge. Uh, Steve at SDC Services says, a lot of shippers prey on CX Virgins, no nous, easy targets. What I would say about that is, I think prey's too strong a word. I would say that sometimes, as a shipper, you might look down at the quotes, you might get like 200, 200, 200, 180, 360. Hang on, some guy is quoted 90 quid. Oh, it's my lucky day. But you won't necessarily think, well, it's because they're new. They don't know what they're doing. They've forgotten about this. I'll rip them off. They might go, well, maybe it's going back that way. Sometimes I've actually had people ring up and ask me why I'm so cheap and then turn around and go, well, you quoted 90. I'm going to give you 100. I've actually had that. People have actually given me more money. So I don't know if that's fair. Maybe some people out there. Not everybody's nice. But on the whole, I've found that most people are pretty fair in this game. So maybe I've just been lucky. But I've been doing it for three years now, so I don't know if you're lucky. Something, you know, I've always said the harder I work, the luckier I get. Uh, Leach001, presumably he's got a license to drive a van. Um, thanks, Pete. Spoke to you earlier this year. Always oh, Lee the decorator. Hello, Lee. How you doing, mate? Um, I've taken the leap and joined the CX in the new year. My only worry is about the age of the van. Although uh, it's only done 50, 57K, it's 2008. Um, is it too old to run the CX? I did one on old vans. No, it's not. As long as it's tidy. And a few people, again, this is a prime example, because this question must have gone up this week. People saying, put a personal plate on it. As long as it's clean and tidy, it doesn't matter. People have already got back to this man. But no, I wouldn't worry about the age of the van. My mate Ken, the market trader, has got like a 2004 um, VW. One of the old crafter type things. But he's, he's done everything. He's done the engine. He's done the seals. It's, it's immaculate. There's not a spot of rust on it. He loves his van. Um... There's nothing wrong with it. If it's clean and it's tidy, the most important thing is for you to be presentable, to be polite, to sort of turn up clean and tidy, to look the part, to fit in. They're, they're not, so they don't, people don't even, it's like cabs or guitars. People don't get into a black cab and go, oh, well, this is the TX4 Gold Edition. Or people don't look at an electric guitar and go, oh, well, that looks like a 1956 uh, Starburst Fender Stratocaster. People see black cab guitar. That's it. And there are plenty of other things. When I see, I see a bike. That's a bike. People don't, well, someone else might go, oh, yeah, but that's actually a magnesium-framed, aluminium, uh, two-gear brake headlights. I have, as you can tell, I've absolutely no idea what you're talking about when it comes down to bikes. People won't see the van. They'll see you. It's like magic. Don't look over here. Don't look over here. They'll see you. As long as you look the part, you'll be fine. This is going to be an extra long, extra special Christmas Sunday q and I've decided now. If you haven't, go and get, do you want to be a bit of the pause? It's in going and have a cup of tea. No, everyone's just turned off. Don't know what something like Christmas meal with some cold sprouts. I don't like sprouts. Apparently, there's a thing with sprouts, which is um, it's to do with different, different kinds of taste buds. When I eat sprouts, I just taste this horrible, bitter taste. 
But apparently, oh, there, there is like it's genetic. Some people haven't got that. They, they taste something completely different to me. And like everyone says, it's Christmas, you've got to eat sprouts. Like I say, I'll give you two reasons why I don't eat sprouts. One, I don't like them. And two, they don't like me. Trust me, it's in everybody's interest around this table that I don't eat sprouts. It's now been agreed. <laughs> um, and finally, on this matter of uh, how much experience you need, join a CX Boxing Emporium says, Hi, Pete, new to the channel. How much do you roughly need to get started on the Curry Exchange? I've done a video about this recently. I believe I've got one link left, so it will go there. Um, yeah, there's a video. Please watch it. Um, alternative, you can call me, and I'll talk you through it. So my telephone number, actually, no, I'll give that after Christmas, just in case anyone's wanting me. There is, if you try back for the old videos, it's there. How to contact me, I'm sure. Wise guys. Uh, right, Steve Campbell says, D, he says, can you get on the exchange if you have a criminal record? He said, I'm not allowed to drive for Amazon or work for Just Eat or Deliveroo, but I'm allowed to drive a private hire cab. Um, and the government have set up schemes for ex-prisoners who are trained to do an HGV licence. I don't think you do, because my mate Big Dave, um, who's in the book, Shall I Go On Mum, which, in fairness, stay tuned, there's something coming up on that one before Christmas. Um, I think one of his mates joined it, I think. But I'm going to have to throw this one out to the wise guys. Can you join the exchange if you've got a criminal record? I think because the exchange is just a platform that puts shippers in touch with drivers, as long as you've got your own, you're self-employed effectively, you've got your own van, you've got your own insurance, I don't think you, it's a requirement to have a clean record. But please get back to me if anyone knows any differently. Alan Bray, he says, oh, all right, we're on the wise guys again. Because um, it's about an IBC being, I looked at the weight in it, I said, you're going to be looking at a ton if that's full of liquid, if that's full of water, that's a ton. He says, an IBC is 1,000 litres full of water. So it's 1,000 kilos plus the weight of the pallet and the cage. Never thought of that. If it's full of another liquid, it could be heavier. So you could, you're looking at a minimum of 1050 for an IBC. If it's full of something like heavier than water, like obviously denser, um, you could be looking at even more still. He says, not all liquids are equal to diesel, are equal. Either diesel is 820 kilos for 1,000 litres. So diesel must be, has got a specific gravity of 8.2. So it's lighter than water. Admittedly, not um, many times are you looking to move diesel in an IBC. No, you're right. I certainly would not want to do that. ADR, stuff ADR, put it in a tanker. <laughs> That's a fine for it. Right. <coughs> Quick one on trucks. Just one today. Uh, read Taco Master, ABC. I use this app called Taco Master. And like I say, if it's good, I'll tell you. If it's not good, I'll also tell you. He said, um, he said, what about split daily rest? He said, three hours in bed for a day, and then you can do nine hours later, later nine hours right later on. No provision for that. Paper and pen cost less than the app pal. And he's dead right. I use Taco Master in the beginning. There is a free version, which... Um, doesn't track you when you're doing the miles. There is a paid version that does a few other bits and pieces, and it's 20 quid in fairness, it wasn't there, and tracks you when you're doing the miles, but it wasn't that accurate. I found in the beginning, for the first two, three weeks, it's very helpful because you're not really sure what you're doing, and it kind of did give me indications, but to be honest with you, after about a month, I dumped it. And now I just have a pen and a piece of paper, and I use I, I use my taco head, which is above the, the steering wheel that's got my driver's card in it, because that's one hundred percent accurate. Because that is what it's going to read. That's what's going to give you the readout. That's going to tell you what's going on. Um, and I use that and a pen and paper, and that's how I work out where I've been, what my hours are, where my breaks are. And of course, I don't overrun. I've got a Janet and John system which works for me. There is a video on it on how I do miles. If I've got a link left, I'll show it. Um, and now we're on to the miscellaneous, and I'm getting very warm in this hat. Uh, Tajish Patel says, have you checked out the Integra system on the CX? They do monthly breakdowns of prices of jobs for each size of vehicle going out of each area. I didn't even know it existed, Tajish. Um, so if anyone uses the Integra system for the wise guys, please let us know and we can pass it on. Jim Allen at JBBS Services says, this week has been good on the CX. Seems to be more small van jobs, but they are paying big van money. Always enjoy watching the videos, mate. Take, take care, take your money. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, that's what I've been finding recently. A lot of the small vans are paying the same kind of money as long wheelbases. And a lot of the lootings and stuff like that are clocking up a little bit in prices. There are looting jobs that are selling for not far off trucks. You've got to be lucky the right area, all that kind of stuff. But if you can get it, you know, so... Um, K-A-S-N Couriers says, 
Oh, yeah, because we said about, do you need COVID, you know, your passport stuff to get in? And I said, the only time I've struggled recently was, um, I, what was it? In Birmingham. What's AMBC? But that's American football, isn't it? What's it called? The uh, NEC, NEC in Birmingham. That I had to actually prove that, um, I had, to give, 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 I had to do one of them tests, I had to prove the test to show them that I had one line that I got COVID to get in. Um, I actually did a test when I got there. Uh, he said, Kensington Olympia wouldn't let me back on site in October because I didn't have vaccine proof or a recent test handy. Luckily, my wife was at home and sent me a picture of my vaccine card, which they then accepted as proof. Otherwise, I would have come unstuck if my wife hadn't have been there when I phoned home. So it, it strikes me that it tends to be centres. You know, exhibition centres, that, that is Kensington, that's an exhibition centre, NEC is an exhibition centre. I've never had to, I mean, I've, I've taken my temperature, they've, they've, I've done questionnaires. I recently went to um, a chemical plant where I had to do an exam, like British sugar. Um, but as of yet, I mean, it's obviously mass social distancing, which it should be anyway. But... Um, yeah, no, they're the only places that I've had to do that to get into so far. Um, oh, yeah, it was, it's E Cruise said the app is no good. I keep backtracking. E Cruise, if you want, I can put you in touch with them. I don't know what's going on wrong with you, but I'll be honest, you're the only guy that said you didn't get on with it. So I'd like to know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry it didn't work for you. I was guessing nothing's foolproof. Uh, Clive Littlewood, he says, um, he says, I've done what he said. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did the thing on what it's like to be a shipper. He says, because I said I had a nightmare with one ship and they run me 12 times. He said, yeah. He said, now multiply that by 40 plus jobs a day, dealt with by two people, and you see how easy <laughs> our shippers have it. Contact's not answering. Yeah, I know that. I'll just try and get in contact. And you sit there and you go, I've, I've normally sorted it out by the time they get back to me. Uh, jobs not ready, lost drivers, co-loaders, wrong size vehicle order. It goes on every day. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Clive. I'm, I hope you have a lovely rest. <laughs> Uh, domain name guy, uh, one of our regulars, he says, drivers should look to buying a... Oh, this is if you're sitting on a bay and they have to hand your keys in. It says, get, get in the buy in a Jackery or um, a Blue, a blue t or a Power Oak solar power bank for the truck when you're in an RDC with no power or sitting when your keys are in the goods in, and that way you've got power. To be honest with you, I've got my phone. I've even got one of them little tablet things. My mate Nigel's gave me some comics. Don't judge me. I'm reading one called um, Crossed. It's really good. It's by a guy called, I think it's Garth Ellis. And he's the same guy who wrote Preacher. You may have seen Preacher. They did, they did a TV series about it that's got the bloke out of Brassic in and um, Tony Stark's dad and some very good looking sort of black girl. And it's about the guy who's got the voice of God. And it's out on Amazon. They've done three series. It starts off good. All these things always peter off near the end. But he wrote Preacher and he wrote it. And then the guy who drew it is a guy who used to drink in our local pub and he died. Um, but they did the original comics, and um, he's written this one. He said, they're kind of zombies, but they're not zombies. It's very good. It's got a few, you read it, you go, oh, 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 dear. Um, incidentally, the guy who wrote Lucifer, the guy who, you know that one on TV, it's on Netflix, six series. Um, the, the guy, one of the guys, it's a collaboration, who wrote the original Lucifer comics, is my old English teacher, a guy called Mike Carey. And he's written loads of books. He wrote a good book called The Girl With All The Gifts that was a film with Paddy Constantine and Gemma Arterton. Um, he was also wrote, I think, the Philip Caster series, which are brilliant. If you read this kind of stuff, if you like Ben Aronovich or you like Neil Gaiman, he's, he's fantastic. Although he killed me because he was my old English teacher. And I used to think, well, if my oldest, if my English teacher's that good at writing, what chance have I got? So I never wrote for most of my life, and I regret that. Still, the books are out there now, like I say. Stay tuned to the channel. Interesting thing coming up. Interesting-ish. Um, <clears throat> yeah, once again, off for the tangent. Uh, Tiffy Oso Cornwall. I think we're near the end now, guys. He says, because um, <coughs> I said about, you know, he's the best vehicle. This is the Luton with the tail from the curtain side, uh, which is this is why I'm still driving. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I've done it yet. There's a video coming. No, it's coming out next week. Why I'm still driving a seven and a half ton, even though I tell everybody I should drive an eighteen ton. And he says, and um, basically, I ended up with a curtain side with a tail lift. Yeah, that's why, because I worked out that it would cost me more money to convert my Luton to a curtain than it would to get an operator's license, and then just swap my Luton for a truck. This is why I say 18 ton trucks, we can't slide, they're the best way forward. But there's a video coming out next week. And Merry Christmas to you, Tiffy. Our man in Cornwall. 
finally, in conclusion, um, M. Latif Mohammed says, he said, I've watched the video since March. He said, um, his background is in IT and he hasn't got the foggiest IT. <laughs> Neither have I, mate. Sorry about that. Um, and he said, thanks very much about his, he, he said, he, he actually wrote quite a long thing. I read it. Um, he said, sorry about you losing your parents. Yeah, I did. I lost my parents to cancer. Uh, but it's a long time ago. And there is a book about it, which is on, if you follow the link um, at the end of the website, that will show you. And um, there's other books as well. It, again, it was a long time ago and it was a crazy, crazy part of my life. But hey, these things happen. Well, you know, what it doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Except for polio. Um, but yes, and uh, like I say, mate, well done. If you're going to start the CX, you need any questions, you know where we are. I say we because it's me and the wise guys. So there's me, the mouth, and everybody else standing behind me knows better than me. And finally, this week's title comic goes to Ian Merrick, who says, Our oh, man in Scotland, he says, I'm in Sherwood Forest, but <laughs> you've got your map upside down. Ian, I am by definition the world's worst courier driver. I live just outside of Dunstable, and if my if the fact that I went down in Dunstable, I couldn't find my way home. I am worse than useless. <laughs> so you are now our man in Sherwood. You are now um, Robin Ian, uh, Ian of Arras, the Sheriff of Ian. I haven't worked it out yet. I've got plenty of time. So that's it. That's it for another year. I will be doing some more videos. Uh, there'll be ones coming up between now and Christmas. Uh, now, uh, yes, now and Christmas. And um, I've also done a couple that are going to go out between Christmas and New Year. One, worst job, best job, where I got stuck in a lift twice. Once could be considered a misfortune, twice is more like carelessness. Um, and also, the time I went to Wales. That video is an hour long, it's got live bedding in it. It's something to watch over the festive period if you're not watching exploding helicopter films or Mary Poppins. So look, I'll go, yeah, I'll say I will do you one, uh, but probably Christmas Eve, I think. But whether there's going to be a Sunday Q&A next week or the week after, I don't know. But I'll keep the comments, as always, and if I have to, I'll catch up in the new year. And whatever you do, have a Merry Christmas, but you've still got four days left to run. So you know what to do with those. Take care. Take money.